Right. Um, let's go quickly round then. Start with silver nitrate chloride. Ground. Okay. Bromide. Um, pale yellow precipitate form. Yeah, it go, goes down in the books as cream to distinguish it from yellow. Yeah, yellow, which is usually. If you say light yellow or whitish yellow, it looks like. Yeah. So, so part of the issue here is that the, the white precipitate you get for chloride is sometimes kind of grey coloured, and the cream precipitate you get is sometimes sort of just like an off white, and the yellow can be pretty, you know, insipid. So yeah, it's quite hard to distinguish those colours, especially if you just got one of them, right? If you just do a test and it's a sort of off whitish, creamish, yellowish colour, then it's very hard to work out what it is. So that, that's where the ammonia comes in, sometimes called a confirmatory test. Okay, but before we do that, let's just write a reaction equation for what's going on here. So again, one way of writing the reaction equation is we could, we could write out the whole thing, blah, 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 um, and uh, where are we, Na, NO3, but a better reaction really just shows the chemicals that are involved. So if we just focus on the product there, the white precipitate you're making is silver chloride, and that is made from silver ions and chloride ions. So that's usually referred to as the ionic, sorry, equation. And usually you put state symbols in an ionic equation just because the product is a different state, right? You're making a solid from two solutions. So ionic equations are quite common. Of course, if you, do, if you do any kind of redox balanced equation, that usually ends up with ions in it as well. MnO4 minus plus Fe2 plus, you know, blah, blah, blah. So they're, they're pretty common. You, you might find quite a lot of your equations between now and the end of year 13 have, have charges in, and that's just something to get used to. Uh, okay. So let's assume we've got our whitish, creamish, yellowish precipitate. We're not quite sure what it is. Uh, so we chuck in some dilute ammonia. What do we get? For uh, white precipitate for chloride. So we don't say it goes clear, we say. Dissolves. Okay. Even if it doesn't all dissolve, it should be fairly obvious as soon as you start adding ammonia that the, the precipitate is, is disappearing. You might end up with a bit on left on the bottom, but most of it should disappear. Okay, if we add dilute ammonia to our cream precipitate for bromide. No visible change. No visible change. Okay, just, we just end up with a slightly diluted precipitate. And our yellow precipitate for iodide? Uh, no visible change. No visible change there either. Okay, so we've helpfully distinguished the chloride precipitate from bromide and iodide because the chloride precipitate is the only one that dissolves in dilute ammonia but we haven't distinguished these two so let's march on for concentrated ammonia well our precipitate's already kind of dissolved the chloride so it'll either dissolve some more if there was a bit left or or we won't see any change or it'll st stays clear and colorless Depends what you want to write there. I, I'm just going to write no visible change because I'm going to assume that all my precipitate is already dissolved. Um, oh no, you split it into two, didn't you? Yeah. You had two bits. So yes, you would have had precipitate dissolves there as well. Sorry, I was thinking adding dilute and then adding conch. No, no. Okay, that makes more sense. Um, what happens with bromide? Another, uh, more We've already got a white precipitate, sorry, we've already got a cream precipitate. We're adding the cream precipitate to conch ammonia. No, we're adding conch ammonia to the cream precipitate. So we can't have a precipitate forming because it's already there. Okay. 
might just need it to add a bit more. Because the, 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 the reason we're adding conch ammonia is to add like an excess of ammonia, is, is what we're looking for there. Did, did anyone get the result? I got it. Uh, I read it dissolved from and then it went white Yeah. PPT dissolves, please. And the yellow precipitate? And it's from white precipitate. Sorry, yellow precipitate. I can't tell. Yeah. Um, it came to white precipitate. Yeah, what, okay. Uh, it does, uh, that's right. It, it does get kind of whitish. That's true. Um, but it's still a precipitate. The precipitate doesn't dissolve which is kind of what we're looking for. So hopefully we end up with something like this, where, again, if you're not quite sure what the colour of the precipitate is, we test it with dilute <coughs> ammonia, only chloride will dissolve. We can then test it with conch ammonia, only chloride and bromide will dissolve. That gives us enough variety to be sure about, about what we've got. And just before we finish, um, What's the, the chemical reaction here? Well, it's an interesting one, and it, it takes us into a bit of chemistry that we really haven't really done before, and you'll do quite a lot of in, in year 13. Uh, that's that the silver can actually um, form a, uh, it's called a coordinate covalent bond. You should have come across those before, but with two ammonia molecules, perhaps haven't come across coordinate covalent bonds between molecules and transition metal ions. Um, and then all of that, we put, use these square brackets, have a plus charge there. Okay. Okay, so it's kind of an interesting reaction. Um, don't worry, if that doesn't make a huge amount of sense, we will come back to that next year, but that's just the reaction that takes place. That's why the silver chloride dissolves. It forms that ammonia, uh, it's called a complex iron. You will do lots on complex irons next year. Um, just one more thing before we finish. There's a missing halide here, and it's not acetatide because there's not enough on the planet. Flu fluoride. Um, what happens with fluoride and silver nitrate? Nothing. Is it a right answer? Yeah. So, silver fluoride is soluble, so you get no precipitate when you add silver nitrate to a solution of fluoride. Oh, there was one more thing. I, I realise it wasn't in the instructions afterwards, but there was a bottle of nitric acid out, which actually Mr Harrison put out just by habit. Go on. You need to acidify the silver nitrate because um, that will prevent uh, carbonates and sulfates from giving a, a false positive when you... Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, so you might remember this, it's in the, it's in the GCSE separates yeah. syllabus. Um, silver nitrate will give you precipitates with other things as well, like carbonate and hydroxide. Now, if you're only testing halides, that's not a problem. But if you're testing some unknown solution X, which you will be for your required practical four, then you need to rule out anything else that might give you a white precipitate as well. So you add the silver nitrate, uh, sorry, you add the nitric acid first before the silver nitrate. Therefore, to stop other ions like carbonate or hydroxide forming a precipitate, what we sometimes call a false positive. You know, if, you, if you had a solution of sodium hydroxide, that would give you a, a precipitate with, um, with silver nitrate as well. So we chuck in a bit of acid first. We will, we will see that again in, in, when, when we look at group two chemistry. All right. Good job.